I'm Yashmita, and I'll be talking about uh, production of gravitation waves. Uh, so when I talk, when I say early universe, I mean uh, very, very early. So the time time I'll be talking about is uh, 10 power minus 34 seconds, which is the, comes under the inflationary epoch. Uh, okay, so this is the brief outline of uh, the uh, talk I'll be giving right now. So as you can see, the topics which I'll be talking about is really different and they are totally unrelated. So I will try my best to relate it uh, as quickly as possible as well. So uh, the introduction to this talk will be uh, the gravitational waves is uh, basically what I'll be talking about. Uh, so the motivation for this one is uh, the, to improve the experimental sensitivities of the gravitational wave detectors. Uh, so, in 2016, there was a Nobel Prize for detection of gravitational waves, as you know. So, uh, we just have to improve the uh, detector sensitivity to have a uh, better uh, detection in the future. And if the detection is proved to be effective and uh, the detection is successful, so we can explain a lot of phenomena like uh, the wormholes, black holes, the cosmological defects in the universe and uh, of course if we know where we came from we'll obviously be able to predict where we are heading and uh, so the principle of this project will be uh, how the, uh, the uh, splitting of gravitation the gravitational force from the other forces so uh, which separated during the grand unification epoch so uh, that will be right after the Planck Epoch and it started to spread out and that's where we are interested in. So we believe that uh, the gravitational waves act as the fingerprint of this universe. So uh, so we start with the basic principle of gauge, va gauge invariance, so which means that if you uh, change the, if you change the uh, transformations, if you, under, if you put it under transformations of the field, it won't, uh, uh, it won't change, it will be invariant. And the best example for this is the photon of the electromagnetic field. So we are used to saying that the photons are massless, but it actually comes from here. So the photons are massless because the mass, if the photon acquires mass, the field will be invariant. And uh, so to give a mathematical outlook for the last statement, uh, this is the equation and uh, the symmetry is what we are interested in. So when when the force, uh, sorry, when the potential is of the is of that form, then uh, the pot the scalar field, which is phi here, if it's uh, if it's uh, if it has a minimum at zero, then symmetry exists because energy is minimum. Uh, so in that case, the mass square term will be positive, and when it is negative, uh, it has a minimum at the minus m square by 2 uh, two lambda and a maximum at 0 which gives it's a Mexican hat shape and which means that the energy is uh, not minimum so, uh, you, so but then there is a chance that the energy can be reached uh, can be uh, increased again to restore the symmetry so next is the symmetry breaking so symmetry breaking is uh, what uh, literally and metaphorically everything started from so symmetry breaking, the symmetry of the universe was broken down due to a phase change. Uh, the nature of the disturbance that caused the symmetry breaking is fall, followed up, sorry. And uh, the properties of the universe after this particular uh, disturbance experiences a shift in space-time through inflation. And uh, we have had a lot of talks about uh, that uh, after this point. So I'll be talking about the one before. So how this is related to the condensed matter physics is uh, is through a temperature correction. We we would like to make a temperature correction, which would give a, a relation to the cosmological phase transitions. And so, not to bore you with the math, I'll just uh, say the critical temperature. So there is a disturbance happening, and beyond that disturbance, when the when the system falls below the critical temperature, the symmetry breaks, and then the gravitational force and the rest of the forces slowly they start to separate from the grand unified supergravity. So how the in disturbance was initially caused is from is due to quantum tunneling, is what is guessed right now. It's, it's still theoretical. So there was a disturbance that that tunneled through. 
uh, somewhere from somewhere to our universe, which was a hot, dense ball. And that started nucleating bubbles, which grew, coalesced, and it changed the phase. And this is the basic fluid dynamical representation of uh, what, I, uh, uh, what we possibly know. And, uh, and so after this quantum tunneling, we have a phase change. So there is the old phase. Slowly the bubbles nucleate, they expand, they grow, and eventually they end up in the new phase. And uh, how these bubbles grow is through, basically it's through two major uh, 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 forms. It's through deflagration or detonation. And uh, the hybrid model, is, which is the crossover of the two, but for convenience, we take over detonations because, this is the basic differences, but we take over detonations because uh, we need supersonic velocity knowing our universe, and uh, we need the adiabatic cooling which we know exists. So, uh, but then we, 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 we do consider hybrid over detonation because we believe that the bubble wall which was expanding would have had a refraction wave which eventually died off. So it has a shock wave front and a refraction wave. Yeah. And then the coalescence. So the coalescence, after the bubbles start coalescing is when the turbulence is created. So that, that's, that will be the source of the gravitation waves. And uh, again, it's a lot of fluid dynamics. So uh, the, the important part is it's, we consider the zero order approximation and the system is in equilibrium. And the mean free, the Nutzen number is less than one, which means the mean free path, that is interaction between the molecules, it's very less than the characteristic in its scale. And this is the basic hydrodynamic equation, the energy momentum tensor. And we consider the fluid. So now we are dealing with plasma in the early universe. So we can't uh, just use the equations we use for uh, water and air in the, in, on Earth. So we, we have to impose the condition of perfect fluids. And which has the zero order approximation and no phase viscosity, no heat, and pressure tensor is acting. And uh, the famous moment equations come into play right now because the, we are treating the plasma as fluid right now. And this is for the non relativistic case. And this can be represented with the Navier Stokes equation. Here, we uh, impose the zero order approximation. And as you can see, the viscosity, there's a viscosity term, and th that goes off why it goes off and why we don't need it, and why we can uh, exclude it without any guilt is coming up. So, and after, after this uh, case, we can, we can reduce the stress uh, energy momentum tensor to this form. And uh, yeah, and so the turbulence, talking about the turbulence between the bubbles. So it, uh, how the turbulence grows, tra the transition, how it, how it happens is, the eddies form in between. So the eddies slowly, uh, they make the smooth flow. It makes it more turbulent, increasing the energy of the system. So uh, how it happens is when there is an external kinetic energy, there is a large eddy that's uh, imposed. So we know eddies, we know of eddies even in the uh, electricity concept. So uh, the large eddies slowly start to break down into smaller ones until they are so small that they can't be broken down any further. And uh, finally, on, on, a, on, a, on a scale which we know, so on a water or air, the, it's, uh, it's usually dissipated by viscosity, but uh, there we are not sure how it's dissipated yet, so it could be the expansion of the turbulence. So this process is called turbulent cascade. As you can see, there are eddies that's uh, creating a mess in the flow. So uh, this model which uh, creates the turbulence is called, uh, we are considering for the model, we are considering cosmograph turbulence. And this is why we are uh, ignoring the viscosity term because of the similarity principle. So one is the energy depends on viscosity, dissipation rate, and wave number. But the second principle states that because of extremely high Reynolds number, which is the fluid velocity, we can ignore the viscosity of the flow. So, uh, it says the Reynolds number tends to infinity. Usually high Reynolds number means 10 to the power 4. But the Reynolds number we are dealing with in this particular case is 10, 10 to the power 36. So uh, it's very high. Uh, so from there we can uh, short enough to, we can uh, without the math, without working out the complete math, we can come down to the uh, uh, anisotropic stress, which is the major uh, 
contributor. So that will be dependent on the velocity correlation function. And the autocorrelation function, as the similarity principle states, is dependent on the wave number and the dissipation rate. And since there's a correlation function, we need a decorrelation function, which is the uh, phase correlation equation. And the U-bar term here, uh, it's, it's very elegant because we can be using this to modify the velocity of the flow in terms of Mach number. So we can change the flow whenever we want to, depending on our own interest. So this is the first model. So there are two models I have used for my reference. And this is the first model I'll be using, and this model uh, gave this graph. So I tried reproducing this result. And as you can see, the results, uh, they had, uh, they were quite exact, except for a new ins uh, uh, numerical instabilities at one or two uh, readings, except that uh, they are similar. So uh, before uh, I, so, so the reason why I had to model the source is because it was for stationary turbulence. So that was a stationary turbulence model, but then we needed for decaying turbulence because the universe is uh, not going to be having stationary turbulence throughout. So the, instead of taking the velocity decorrelation, I have taken a, a unit step function here, which depends on the time as well as gives a velocity step to the equation. So, and then uh, there's decaying turbulence. So decaying turbulence, it means uh, how the, the turbulence has decayed over time and how the energy is uh, dissipated over time. And uh, so this is the equation for the gravitational wave power spectrum, which is what the actual interest line is in. So it has two uh, conditions imposed on. So I can couple these two models, the first model, which I call GKK, named after the initials of the authors, and the second model, which is uh, CDS. So to couple these two, uh, I'm considering the stationary turbulence, and I'm taking the source as short lasting, uh, because I want to make life easier. And uh, this is the anisotropic stress uh, graph for the um, uh, both models, for all three models, for my model as well, the DPM decay turbulence model. And uh, after a lot of uh, efforts in reducing the numerical instabilities, these graphs were in these ob this obedient before. So uh, this, this is the graph I've got, and as you can see, till the peak, the graph obeys the GKK model, and after the peak, it obeys the CDS model. And as you can see, there is a drop in the peak, which means that, that when there is a detection, if we can match it with this particular frequency, it can be easier. So the, the more we can bring down the peak, the easier will be the detection. So the conclusion is, uh, as we can see, the reduced, we have reduced the range of the peak, which is what the uh, aim was. And the slopes have, uh, well, they have a, a nice power law uh, variation, which can be adaptable to both stationary and decaying turbulence. And this model, it overcomes the correction equation's uh, very big uh, limitation of being not adaptable to high velocities. And the U-bar term, which we saw in the autocorrelation function, it can be accounted for the speed of and the limitation of this model is, of course, this uh, long-lasting source. And uh, there are guess, there, there are some magnetic effects that are guessed to be uh, there in the flow. So we can't apply for that, for, for the same for the free wave and the free wave. So thank you for your attention and this opportunity. And if there are any questions.